daily light. <laughs> At least I think it is. I know it's very bright, especially this morning. Uh, but it's beautiful. It's actually kind of nice to be able to see the sun after having so much rain and overcast and clouds. Now it's just gorgeous and beautiful and we're expecting 100 day weather. May have to move inside and do some recording. But whether God brings sunshine or rain or whether he brings 100 degrees or 80 or <laughs> as in summer or 90, you know, we give thanks for all that God is. Not just how we feel or how we think or what we are, but because of who he is. He created us. He loves us. He gave us all things that we need, really, to enjoy life and to be a part of the living experience. And sometimes I think people forget that, is that they don't look at what's about them and around them and recognize that wherever you are and however you are, there is a reason and a purpose for your life and for what you're going through. And that also, more than that, there is something you can give thanks for. Every day, there's something you can be thankful for. You're alive. <laughs> I have coffee. <laughs> Do you? If not, okay. But in everything, we're told to give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Because we don't take a breath except that God gave us another day to experience. We don't live except that God gave us one more day to live. So we'll pass into eternity and we will be with God or without God through all of time. And time will continue on in the ages to ages process that you'll either be enjoying all that God wants to pour out and reveal about himself or you'll be in the lake of fire. And those are things that God has warned us about, and those are reality. So what we do now in our life prepares us for what will happen later at the end of our life, when we move into real life. So in doing so, emotionals help prepare us and point us in the right direction in our mind, in our heart, in our feelings, in our emotions, in, in the sunlight, in the peaceful times. And this morning, in daily life, take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. Go ye into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. Whatsoever shall give you, whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Lord, when saw we you hunger and fed you or thirsty and gave you to drink? When did we see you a stranger and took you in or naked and clothed you? And the king shall answer and say unto him, Inasmuch as you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Come, ye blessed of my fathers, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Thou compassed my path and my lying down. Jacob awakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole world to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makes me dwell in safety. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall be no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. When thou liest down, when thou, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. So he giveth his beloved sleep. You know, in so many ways we forget that there's more going on we don't see 
than what we do see. That God is at work consistently, always, doing that which he does. <laughs> no. <laughs> consistently, always, providing for his children and people who love him and delight in him. Taking care of them. Arranging the circumstances that he should be revealed in them. Preparing the hearts of those who would choose to follow him. Opening up doors that they never thought they would imagine possible. And waiting and watching for the moment when we will awake from our sleep, knowing that God protected us all through the night and God took care of us through the day. There is someone who's for you more than your mother, your father, your church, your home, your own personal belief system, your own religious ideas, and that's God. Because God never said that he's going to turn his back on you and people think of holiness and austerity that God is going to, if you don't do it my way, you're heading for hell and God help you then. But God reaches out in his love, sharing and caring for the person to say, look, sit down with me, talk to me, get to know me, find out who I am, and you'll realize that I am love, that what you've always desired is found in me, that nothing of what you imagine that judgment and righteousness and holiness, how it could never be something that you'd understand as far as the balance of life is concerned, I can show you throughout eternity why it was always done as perfect and righteous and true. Speak to me and I will speak to you. Find me and I will find you. Be with me and I will show you things that are too marvelous to behold. And you know, the Lord really wants to and shares with those whom he chooses, but also whom chooses him. All you need to do is call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. It's that simple. It's pretty easy to help someone too. You know, you you read about and you see about all these things where, you know, people talk about these huge ministries of suffering and, and anxieties going on in the world and they get all excited about their political viewpoints and their social agendas and their ideas that they need to organize and be so mega involved with. Do we forget the everyday things that are all about us? Do you know your neighbor? Is your person who's maybe even sitting next to you hurting inside? Do they have a need? Do you know one of your family members who's in jail that maybe just needs a word from you and not one of discouragement, but one of just saying, hey, I'm here for you. I can listen. I care. When Jesus said, in as much as you've done it to the least of my brethren, you've done it unto me, he was expressing the very words of what he said on the Sermon on the Mount when he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Love reaches out when you don't feel like it and you're uncomfortable to touch the heart of someone else who's in need. And you'll never know that they were in need until they thank you and you realize after the fact that you were the person that God chose to be there for that person at their time of need. You can do it because God will use you. And it's as simple as just the three words I keep saying. Just do it. When you want to hear God speak, ask him. When you want to hear what God's wanting you to do, just do it. You try it, you'll see. God will meet you there. And you know, when it comes to helping someone else, or when it comes to sharing with someone else or talking to them, you don't need a mega ministry. You don't need a blanket covering of whatever it may be that you think you need. The only thing you need to do is just commit your ways unto the Lord, trust also in Him, and He'll still bring it to pass. Just step out and try it. <laughs> like these devotionals. If you don't think God speaks to you, don't do it. But if you hear something that does fit for you, then it's pretty simple what you have to do. And it's just, put it bluntly, do it. <laughs> That's what I do. That's how these came about. You just do it. And you know, 
god will love you for it because you tried.